Hey everybody, let's talk a little bit about ZBrush. I've bounced off ZBrush dozens of times in the past dozen or so years, and uh, it's because I could never figure out what the heck was going on. I finally did. I sat down, I figured out what I couldn't figure out, and now I quite like ZBrush. And to save you the pain, if you happen to also want to use ZBrush or have bounced off of ZBrush, I thought I would explain what I didn't get and what I think is criminally underplayed in the tutorial videos. And that is that ZBrush has no scene. Other editors like Maya and Blender, there's a whole bunch of stuff in your scene, and you can edit the things that are in your scene, and they're in the world that you've created, and you put cameras and all that stuff. This isn't like that at all. It just looks enough like that to confuse you. Because what you have in ZBrush is a backdrop and an active tool. So what we're doing now is we're editing an active tool. And I just threw this together super, super fast. Uh, it's the sort of thing you could do in 30 seconds if you were watching a tutorial on how to do stuff in ZBrush. But at some point during your exploration, you're going to do this. And you're going to be like, okay, wait, what just happened? That, that, doesn't, that doesn't feel right. Undo. I can't go back into edit mode. What's going on here? Can I, I can't select it. Uh, what? What's going on here? Okay, I can go back into edit. What? Okay, so I can go back into edit mode, but what? What? What's this? What's going on? This is really confusing. If you have, if you're thinking about it in terms of a scene, why is there something in my scene that isn't moving and doesn't doesn't behave? And the answer is that's a backdrop. You've just stamped your tool onto the backdrop. It's not bad. It's not hard to deal with. It's just that it's so out of left field and you can't undo it because it's a completely different kind of operation. So this really gets confusing. The answer is control N will clear your backdrop. So the backdrop's gone and you're left with the tool. And the thing about the tool is that you can just delete it from the scene and stamp it back in as many times as you'd like. And you're just always going to be editing the tool. So there's no difficulty in changing things up and putting in a different set of stamps. If you accidentally end up putting stamps like this, who cares? Just delete them. And you can select which tool you want to put into the, into the world and edit. So when you are just beginning in ZBrush, chances are pretty high that you're going to be thinking of scenes because everything else uses scenes. And when you put your object into the scene, you sort of think, well, I'm just going to be able to edit this object and do whatever I want. And I can go away to another object and edit that object and do whatever I want. That's not how it works in ZBrush. You do get something that's sort of like that using sub tools, which is when your active tool has multiple parts. But that's a separate set of operations. And it's not something that's very confusing. What's very confusing is when you accidentally stamp things to the backdrop and then you can't get them back. And you feel like, oh my gosh, I have just walked away from the thing I was modeling. How do I go back and model the thing I was modeling? You don't have to worry about that. The thing you were modeling is a tool and it's still your active tool. You just clear the backdrop, paint it back in, and edit it again. Okay. So that's what I couldn't figure out. That's what never gets really, really stressed in any of the tutorial videos I've ever seen. 